Hi, my name is Shalom Patel and I'm from Duke University. I'm also a developer for the Internet2 Grouper project. This is the admin track of the Grouper training. In this video, I'll be talking about the provisioning service provider, also known as the PSP, and this is part one. This is what I'll be discussing in part one. I'll first give an introduction to what the PSP is and how it fits into Grouper. Um, then I'll talk about the various packages involved with the PSP. I'll show you how you can download the PSP and finally how you can install it with Grouper. So first of all, what is the PSP? The PSP is an SPML v2 provisioning service provider. Uh, it was formerly known as L.PCNG. SPML stands for Service Provisioning Markup Language. It's an open source standard developed by, developed by OASIS that's XML based and helps exchange information between systems. This could be user information, groups, resources, and so forth. Some of the primary operations that are defined in SPML are lookup, search, add, modify, and delete. So this means you can, for instance, look up an object in a target system and get its current state. You can perform a search and get objects that match the search criteria. Uh, you can add a new object to the target system. You can update an existing object, or you can delete an object. So the PSP software that's part of Grouper allows you to provision objects using source data to target systems. Most people that are looking at this video are probably most interested in the case where the source is Grouper and the target is an LDAP directory or Active Directory or some other target system. But it's also possible to use the PSP software in the case where the source is an LDAP directory and the target is Grouper. Um, you would do this, for instance, if you want to sync groups from LDAP to Grouper. In theory, as long as the appropriate connectors exist or you're willing to build them, the source and target can be anything. The PSP software comes with uh, some connectors already to make the most common use cases possible without any development work. The PSP uses the Shibboleth Attribute Resolver to retrieve source data. And just to clarify that, you don't actually deploy an, an instance of the Shibboleth IDP for this. Uh, the Shibboleth Attribute Resolver code is just reused by the PSP. The Attribute Resolver has data connectors which connect to source systems and retrieve attributes about objects. If, you, if you've worked with the Shibboleth IDP, uh, then the objects that you're most accustomed to are probably user objects. But that doesn't have to be the, the case. Now regarding the target, uh, target data is queried and updated using different connectors. The PSP software has an interface that can be extended if you want to develop your own target connector. In the end, you basically mainly need to be able to handle the operations I discussed in the previous slide. If your target cannot handle SPML directly, then the connector would simply convert the SPML operations into operations that can be handled by the target. Here's the architecture diagram of Grouper as of Grouper version 2.1. Uh, this shows how the PSP fits into the architecture. The PSP is circled in red. In this diagram, the assumption is that the source is Grouper and the target is an LDAP or Active Directory. The PSP can take the source data and provision it to the target. Here's another diagram that shows in a bit more detail of the case where a grouper is a source and an LDAP is the target. The provisioning engine uses Shibboleth Attribute Resolver to query grouper for objects. The provisioning engine also performs queries on the target LDAP using the LDAP connector. So after the provisioning engine knows what the state of a particular object is in both grouper and the target LDAP, it performs the appropriate operation on the target if needed. Uh, note that the provisioning engine talks to the LDAP connector using SPML. However, the LDAP connector converts that SPML request into a request that can be used to communicate with the target LDAP. In this case, it simply uses VTLDAP. So next, I'll talk about some of the packages uh, that make up the PSP. The PSP package, first of all, is the core provisioning uh, code that contains the provisioning engine. Uh, then there's also the PSP distribution and PSP distribution for Grouper, 
the latter of which is the module that ends up containing the actual software that gets added to Gruber. There are multiple modules that start with PSP-example. Uh, these are tests and configuration examples of various types of configuration methods. There's the PSP Grouper changelog module, uh, which contains the Grouper changelog consumer for incremental provisioning of Grouper data and the data connectors to support that. Next, we have the PSP Grouper LDAP module, which allows Grouper and LDAP to work together, um, including the attribute definitions that are required to construct group names from LDAP DNs and vice versa. The PSP grouper source is used to help resolve some of uh, the grouper data using the Shibboleth attribute resolver. It contains a few special data connectors to query source data. The PSP grouper target is used to provision uh, grouper. Uh, you would use this if, for instance, your LDAP is a source and you want to uh, sync some groups from LDAP to grouper. The PSP LDAP target contains target connector uh, for provisioning LDAP in Active Directory. Uh, and finally, the PSP parent module is the parent of the other modules. So now I'll talk a bit about how you can download the PSP. Uh, first of all, you can get the PSP from the Grouper software site, which I have linked here. Uh, you can also get it using the Grouper installer. As of Grouper 2.1, the Grouper installer will help download and install the PSP, but it won't do any configuration. You can get the PSP from Maven also. I'll do a quick demo of the download manually without using the Grouper installer so you can see what's going on specifically. So I'm in a directory here that just has uh, the Grouper API extracted up. Um, what I'm going to do now is run a curl statement to download the PSP. And there it's downloaded now. Um, it's called grouper.psp-2.1.0.tar.gz um, and the URL for this uh, tarball was just straight off the, uh, the download site. So I'm going to extract it first. Um, and there we go. So now if I go into the grouper.psp-2.1.0 uh, directory, um, here are the contents of the extracted um, tarball. So next I'll talk about the install. Um, again, the grouper installer can install this, or you can manually install it by copying jars and config files. Uh, you would copy the jars from the lib custom directory of the PSP to the lib custom directory of Grouper, uh, and you would copy the example configuration from a particular directory within the conf directory of the PSP to the conf directory of Grouper. The particular directory depends on the example that you'd want to start off with, uh, which I'll cover in the next slide. So these are a subset of the example configuration types that come with the PSP. The LDAP configuration example should apply to any directory server. Uh, it's the most basic LDAP provisioning example. Then there's an active directory example which takes into account uh, a typical AD environment such as the use of the attribute time account name. Uh, there's an open LDAP example which built on top of the basic LDAP example by including more provisioning options. Uh, it also accounts for some open LDAP specific things like the member attribute being a required attribute in the group of names object class. There's also an example of how you can provision to multiple LDAP directories. Uh, this example is also useful if you want to provision to an LDAP directory that's not one of your grouper subject sources. And finally, there's an example of provisioning from LDAP to grouper. Uh, so if you have certain groups that are maintained in your LDAP, but you want them synced to grouper, you can use this example. Once again, I'll do a quick demo to show how you can copy the configuration files over. Um, if I look in the um, the grouper 
lib custom directory right now. Um, there's nothing in there. Um, if I look in the PSP lib custom directory, you'll see that there are a bunch of jars in there. So step one of the install is to copy these jars over. And then step two is to copy the configuration files over. Um, so within the, the grouper PSP uh, conf directory, as I mentioned before, there are a bunch of example uh, configuration types. So say if I want to go with the open LDAP example, uh, these are the configuration files uh, in that directory. Uh, note that the sources.xml file um, you may or may not want to copy over depending on how you have things set up. Um, so this assumes that your LDAP is a subject source in Grouper. Um, if that's the case and you haven't already configured the sources.xml file, uh, then you can use the file that comes with this as a starting point. And that's really all for the install, just copying the, the jars and the configuration files over. So that's all for this tutorial. You can click on the quiz link in the video description uh, to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. Here are some links for more information. In the next video in the Grouper Online Training for Administrators, is the Grouper PSP Part 2. Thanks.